In the next couple of videos, I'm going to go over how to use both saved and application variables in Bolt Visual Scripting. These variables will allow a developer to save information between play sessions or transfer data from one Unity scene to another. As an example of how to use these variables, I'll be building a simple character selector. You'll be able to select between three characters in a start scene and then transition to a play scene and load the selected character. I'll also create the ability for the player to enter their name and track their total time. These examples are a bit silly, but we'll demonstrate how to use saved variables. So if that sounds useful, let's get started. As a quick side note, all the assets are either created in Blender by myself or are free assets from the Unity Asset Store. I'll include links to all the assets in the video description below. I'm also including a link so you can download the entire project, minus Bolt of course, which you will need to purchase and import into your project on your own. In this video, I'll only be working in the character selection scene of the project. Additionally, I'm only going to be working with the UI. So let's take a quick tour of the UI elements and leave the other scene elements for the next video. At the top of the canvas, there's a text element that will show the name of the selected character. Then on the top right corner is another text element that will show the total accumulated time that the game has been played. This will make use of saved variables and is a simple example of tracking and displaying player stats, which is something that can be useful for you as a developer and also fun for the player. So if you're not doing this in your project, you should be, it's a win-win. On the left and the right of the canvas are two arrow buttons that will rotate the platform and control the character selection. Then at the bottom of the canvas is an input field where the player can type their name. I'll be using this as another example of how to use saved variables. Lastly, there's a start button in the bottom right corner that will load the next scene once the player is done selecting their character. So let's get to building things. And the first thing I want to create is the ability to track the total time played. To do this, I need to create a new saved variable. Clicking on the Save Variable tab in the Variables window, you can see that there are two additional tabs, and I'll be taking a closer look at those in a bit. But for now, I just want to create a new variable and I'm going to call it total time played, and it will be of type float. I also need a new flow macro to track the time played, and I'll name it, very creatively, track time played. This macro will need to be on a scene object in every scene in order to accurately track the time played. So I'm going to place it in a flow machine on the character selector object. Now I'm going to be tracking the time in a quick and dirty way, which may not be the best or most performant, but that's not my goal. My primary goal is to show how to use the saved variables. So I'm going to add an update event as well as dragging in a get variable that references our newly created saved variable. I'll then drag out the node from the get variable unit and search for add. I want the scalar add unit. Each frame the game is being played, I want to add the time of the previous frame to the total time played. To do this, I'll need a time delta time unit and I'll connect it to the add unit. The last step is to hold alt and drag in the total time played variable to get a set variable unit. I'll connect the flow from the update event as well as the output from the add unit. The result of this code is that the value of the total time played will get updated and saved each frame. And with that done, I can now test the code as well as check out how saved variables work in Bolt. I can see in the variable window that the value of total time played is correctly updating each frame. No surprise, and there's not a lot new about this. However, if I exit play mode and go back to the save variables, I can now see what the two tabs do. The first tab is the initial tab, which allows the player to set a starting value as you would for any other variable. You'll notice that the value is still zero. If I then click on the save tab, I can see that the value has been saved. Going back into play mode, the save value will be loaded and the total time played will not start at zero, but will start from this new save value. Leaving play mode once again, I can see some extra functionality given to us by Bolt. That is, if I go back to the saved variables, I can manually change the saved value in the computer. I can change it to any value I want, even a negative. And when I go back to play mode, I can see the change reflected in the value displayed. This is really handy and something that's much, much easier to do in Bolt than in C-sharp. Next, I want to display the value in the UI, and I'll do this with another flow macro. I'll call the new flow macro display time played, and I'll attach it to a flow machine on the time played text element. I'll add in an update event so the text updates each frame. Next, I'll drag in a reference to the total time played variable, and then to keep things looking a bit neater, I'm going to use a math round to int unit so the decimal value of the time won't be displayed in the UI. I don't just want to display the numerical value, so I'll add a string concat unit to give the value a prefix or a label. 
I'll do this with a string literal, giving it a value of total time played and connecting it to the first argument of the string concat unit. I'll then connect the output of the round to int to the second argument of the string concat unit. The last and final step is to update the text value. And I'll do this by searching for text text, selecting the set option, and finally connecting the flow and string nodes. Then going into play mode, I can see the time is now displayed and updated each frame. The last thing I want to create is the ability for the player to enter their name and save their name for the next time they play. This is another demonstration of how to use and load save variables, as well as a bit of how to use input fields. To do this, I'm going to need another save variable, and I'm going to call it player name. You can set the type to string, but Bolt seemingly resets the type to null as the value and type are set in code, so you can also leave the type just as null. Next, I'll create a new flow macro and call it save player name and drop it into a flow machine on the player name input field. I'm going to make use of the on input field value changed event, which gets called any and every time the value of the input field changes. This isn't the only way to do it, but it's easy and it works, and sometimes that's all you need. I need to drag in a set variable unit with a reference to the newly created player name variable and connect the flow and string nodes from the event unit. This is enough to test the code. So in play mode, I can see that as I type, the saved variable is updated. Now, while this is good, it would be better if the player's name would be loaded into the input field the next time they play. So to do that, I want to check if there is a saved name. And if there is, then I'll load it. If not, I'll leave the field at its default value. This only needs to happen when the scene is loaded. So I'll add an on enable event to my flow macro. I'll then drag in a get variable unit that references the player name. To see if there's a saved value, I'll use a string equals unit connecting the flow from the on enable as well as the player name variable to the top string node while leaving the bottom string node blank. The assumption here being that if the save variable is blank, there is no save name to load. I'll then use a branch to evaluate the resulting Boolean. If the value is false, meaning the save value is not blank, then I need to update the text value in the input field. And this is done with the input field text set unit. Now when I enter play mode, the save player name is loaded into the input field and I can still change the value and have it saved. So there you go. Two simple, maybe a little silly, but hopefully useful examples of how to use save variables in a Unity project with Bolt Visual Scripting. If you enjoyed the video, or better yet, you found it useful, please think about hitting the subscribe or like buttons. If you want to go further in supporting the channel, check the links on the screen or in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.